Jason's 28 years old. Yeah. Is your relationship with him better now than it was when he was eight years old? I never really had a good relationship with him. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am here in Nashville, Tennessee, the live music capital of the world. Uh, unfortunately, not the live royalty-free music capital of the world. So this might get flagged, but who knows? Fuck it. Copyright laws aren't real. I'm not real. None of this is real. We're in a simulation. Sir, would you like to talk to a gecko about life? Okay, he, I thought he was going to say yes. How are you? I'm doing good. What is your name? Sam. Sam. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. What's, uh, what's going on with you? Um, so I just got married back in April, okay. and I'm about to go through a divorce. Already. So that's, okay, that's how many months? Uh, six months. Six months? Six, about. Okay, so, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's better than That's Kim longer than I've ever been married. <laughs> I feel like you gave it a solid try. <laughs> I beat Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys, but it's close. Now, what is it that uh, is is has caused the downfall of the marriage? Um, so he's in the military, so that was one of the main issues. <laughs> um, but I think it was really just a lot of miscommunication, and there's not a whole lot of give and take. So okay. on either end, and I think me moving out of my home state and moving to be where he was there was a lot of resentment that built up and he kind of just lost his mind and whenever some people get married they just turn into different people and that's kind of what happened now tell me uh how would what what would you say is the difference that you observed between before you guys were married and after you guys were married in terms of his personality and how you know he was he was was with you and whatnot um so i think one of the main differences is when we were dating, there wasn't a whole lot of jealousy or insecurity on either side. And then as soon as we got married, it was like as soon as something was like solidified, he started becoming really, really insecure and always thought that there was like something going on, even though I like up and moved and quit my job and did all kinds of stuff to like reassure him and be with him. But he still just didn't want to accept any of it and so no matter what I did there was always an issue and like I could never appease him in any way interesting so I think I just got to the point where I've been sucking up to him so much that I didn't want to do it anymore and it just seems like I'm too young to have to always try to make somebody else happy when there's an opportunity for me to go do something else if yeah I don't want to can I, I ask and this might be a personal question but I mean has your relationship have you made sacrifices for your relationship that have sort of caused any impediments on your own personal development? Um, I think absolutely. I think before we had gotten married, I talked about going back to school because I have an associate's degree, but I wanted to get my bachelor's degree. Yeah. And me marrying him took away my free money to go to school, so I gave going up or gave school up to go move with him. Mm. I moved out of my hometown where my entire family is to go be with him. And I'm an only child, so like family is really, really important to me. And so being away from my family is really hard. And then I also quit the job that I had here or in Columbia where I live um, to go live at Fort Bragg. So I feel like there was mostly me making the sacrifices. And like I come from a military family, so I never wanted to be a military wife, but he had made up his mind that that's what he was gonna do. Interesting. And so I agreed to do it and I feel like I put my all into it and he's done nothing but self-sabotage us. Was, was the fact that you came from a military family, did that like, subconsciously make you feel like oh okay I'm like I've done this before I'll do it again yeah I definitely think there was a lot of things that I knew to expect so I wasn't shocked going into it it yeah. was just like I didn't want to raise a family in that lifestyle because it yeah. is so hard yeah but I knew that I was signing up for it so I didn't go into it with a bad attitude or a whole lot of resentment because of that it was more so like the job he has he's gonna be at one base and it's three hours from my family so it's not that big of a deal but it was still there were so many sacrifices on just one side sure. and then him having all the issues in the relationship with me even though there wasn't really anything wrong like we, there was nothing wrong we had a fully furnished house we had just got married like you're newlyweds you're supposed to be happy and i feel like he just always had to find an issue with something because everything was fine and so i feel like there's just too much resentment on either side now because i feel like he took away me being happy and me having a happy marriage just because he wants to start fights do you as you are exiting the relationship, do you harbor resentment or anger towards him still? Um, 
I don't think it's that. I think it's more so just like I wish him well. And like he's a great guy. It's just I don't think we're compatible enough to be able okay, to work sure, through things. Sure, sure. And I don't think that either one of us deserves to feel that unhappy because it's not like I resent him, but there's just certain things that have happened that like I couldn't forgive him for. Yeah. And even if I did stay with him, it feels like looking back the first like year of my marriage is going to be ruined and that's just like that's really messed up for somebody to have to like live with when I could just start over and I could go get a job and I could be happy and not have to deal with rebuilding a relationship that never had any problems to begin with moving forward are you like are you are you like looking for a soulmate is having a partner important to you or or moving forward are you kind of trying to just focus more on yourself I don't think I don't really relatively like believe in soulmates. Sure. I think it's just if you get along with somebody, you get along with them. Yeah. And I think communication is really, really important. But I do enjoy being single and having my freedom. So I don't necessarily go out like looking for a partner, but everybody likes to have somebody there, like sure. stuff to do with. Sure. So I mean, it's whatever happens, happens. But I feel like right now I just want to be able to go figure out what I want to do and get another job, maybe go back to school and get everything sorted before I bring anybody else in the mix so that I get time to be selfish. Good, good, good. And, you know, I feel like it's important to, to learn that lesson, Yeah. you know? Well, like, that's what I was just telling my mom last night. I was like, even though this really sucks and, like, nobody at 22 wants to say they're divorced, it's still like maybe this is going to give me the opportunity to go figure out what I'm actually supposed to be doing good, because it yeah. clearly is not this. Good, good. I'm glad, I'm glad that you think about it that way yeah. because you, there's – you could you if you were like pessimistic yeah. you could be like oh i wasted so much time <laughs> well, well, and one of his and one of his big issues with me is i'm like too unemotional so i feel like no, I, no, I think I, i'm handling this better than anyone else involved <laughs> no you're doing it great i think you're doing the, uh, the right way because you could like sit and be like oh i waste all the time but you, i mean you're learning a lesson you're growing yeah. developing i think it's a good thing i think you have a, po- a good mindset about it i've learned a lot from mistakes so i might as well keep making them <laughs> what's your like before we go what's your like next move um well we're here right now and we're gonna be here for a few days and then i'm gonna figure out how to get everything i own from north carolina back to south carolina yeah. and then i'm gonna find a job and i might enlist in the military in a few months you might enlist i i would think by now you are sick and tired of <laughs> the military well if it's making me mad that somebody else is doing it i might as well go do it so then i'm not fair mad enough anymore. fair <laughs> enough do, do you think your mom would let me interview her i guess i can ask do you have anything her. you want to talk about you don't, you don't want to talk? She's pretty happy. I was about to say, her only, her only stress in life is me. Well, no, I, the whole the show is not, it's, it's not necessarily, we don't have to talk about bad things. I, I'd love to hear about good stuff. Okay, no worries. Uh, hold on. There's a beer bus next to us. Samantha, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, don't get married in your 20s. <laughs> and don't marry a military man. <laughs> w- wise words from experience. Thank you for talking Thank to a gecko, Samantha. Nice I appreciate you. you. I'm hoping I don't break this chair. <laughs> no, no, no. You're gra- what's uh, what's your name, dude? Guitar John. Guitar John. Very nice to meet you, man. And what's I your see, name? I see, my name is Lyle. Lyle, the gecko. Cool. I, I see that you have a guitar. I do. I, no, actually, it's just a midget stripper. <laughs> <laughs> How I long like have you t- been uh, playing guitar for? Uh, since I was about 15 or 16, but I've been doing it on the street corners since for the last 15 years. Ago. Oh, yeah? Uh, is this uh, uh, a good place to, to play guitar, and do you get a lot of tips around here? It depends on the area and the people. I mean, some days are better than others. Just, okay. I mean, because basically I'm just doing the same thing people in the, all these establishments are. I'm just doing it on the street corners. Yeah, yeah. Do you meet a lot of interesting folks out here on Broadway? You do, actually. I mean, it, and not just Broadway. I mean, Second or the alley going up to Perner's Alley there. Yeah. It, rather, pe- most Some people are just very hospitable and appreciate yeah. it. And then other ones just walk past and don't with their just not really caring but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what so your music what uh what types of things do you do you sing about or or play about what inspires you artistically Uh, life i mean rambling from cross country uh being a beach bum that i was out in uh, santa monica for seven months i mean i just try to put my own perspective on my own life incorporate that in my music and 
between listening to that and other artists that have done the same thing. It's been enjoyable. So you say you're trying to incorporate your own perspective on life. Pretty much. I mean, I've been inspired to ramble from some of my heroes that did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Who are, who are your heroes that have inspired you? Guy Clark, Towns Van Zandt, uh, Jimmy Buffett, Jerry Jeff Walker. I mean, so many great artists over the years that I've just... Hank Williams. I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Hank Williams and Elvis. Mm -hmm. Of course, that hasn't happened, but but you're I'm gu still John, hopeful. Guitar John, the Guitar John show. You don't need to be Hank Williams. You're the Guitar John. Yes, the Guitar John show on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The Guitar John show. Is that all one word? Uh, no, no, it's uh, separate words. The Guitar John Show. Perfect. So, okay, so you've been, uh, you you were bumming around uh, Santa Monica Beach for a while, going across the country. What kinds of, th I know this is a general question, but what kinds of things have you learned from all the people that you've met and the places that you've seen? That there ain't no place in the world like Nashville. Okay. And that California has some really good weed, good weather, and beautiful women. But then again, I've seen beautiful women here, and they hold. Why um, is there no place like Nashville? It's just a community of musicians, songwriters, and artists here that get more respect here than they do. I've seen in any place else I've ever been. Do you feel like the general public's treatment towards street musicians is better here than anywhere else you've been? I truly think so. I mean. From my own perspective, I think they uh, look at street musicians better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any desire to like ever like record music or do anything like that? At some point, I plan on it. I mean, it takes money to do anything sure. right. So now that I've got my Tennessee ID and I'm official resident, my next... Uh, thing is putting in some applications, find a part-time job, and just trying to save some money so I can work towards that. Because anything worth having is worth working for, even if it means going washing dishes somewhere for a while. How many, uh, how often are you out here on the street playing? Uh, pretty much every day, although I haven't really done it the last couple of days just because of the fact that it's uh, been a little chilly out, but... Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever had like any um, like you know I know people are out here late at night there's a lot of alcohol a lot of drink and has anything ever like gone wrong or anything like that or not here in Nashville thank God I mean I've had other places uh, that wasn't so pleasant but that it, it, it's that's life though I mean you, who can uh, predict it can I hear a little bit more about like the community of street musicians? Like, are you? Do you have a lot of friends who also play music on the street? I've met a lot of people around here uh, that are musicians on the street corner, uh, and they are really good. I mean, really good artists. That some I think uh, what I'd like to do, or what I think I'm surprised nobody's done it yet, is get a bunch of really good street artists and get a, uh, do a CD of maybe each nice. one of them doing two of their original songs called the Nashville Buskers Project. I like that. If anyone uh, is is listening to this and is a, uh, a street musician, hit up the John, what is it, the John? The, the Guitar John Show. The Guitar John Show. Guitar John, do you, would you be down to play some? Hold on, let me see if I have cash real quick. Can I can I get a ditty for a ten? Yeah, sir. Sure, okay, sick. We are gonna hear an original song from the Guitar John. Your smile made my day. Heard when I watched you walk away. Fell in love with you today Here in L.A. Hell yeah. Face of an angel, eyes that sad Wish I could make you mad Girl, you took my breath away Here in L.A. Now you're gone, I'm so blue 
here missing you Wish I could see one more time day Here in L.A. Baby looks so fine Wish I could make you mine Wish I could see one more time day here in L.A. Baby, I'm moving on Gotta keep singing my song I'm gonna leave you here today Here Stuck in, in L.A. LA. Oh, I fucked it up. Don't know what more I can say Goodbye Oh, that was great, man! Thank you very much for singing one of your originals. What can I can I ask you Not some questions problem. about the song? Sure. What what so what inspired that that song? What was like the 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 genesis of of the lyrics and whatnot? Well, I was being out in Santa Monica, of course, yeah. seeing all these beautiful women walking by in bikinis and everything, and. Just, golden nice golden brown suntan everything and it's like i'd fallen like just like here i'd fall in love every five ten minutes so i don't mm -hmm. know if you call it love but mm -hmm. maybe lust but i wasn't gonna write about both, that both, so. both powerful feelings i know right some people have a hard time uh, determining between the two but it's like all these beautiful women i'd see and it just started Floating through my head, and next thing I know, bam, a song I wrote. Mm, mm. I feel like love and lust, and they're, they're, they like they they inspire lots of songs. Like all so all the most popular music is about sex and relationships and all that stuff. I know, right? What um, what? Give us your give us your handles one more time so that people can find you. The Guitar John Show. Guitar John. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And I'm coming soon to a street corner near you. Well, actually, I'm here in Nashville, but hoping to come to your TV screens via Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, the Guitar John, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Peace, love, chicken grease. Y'all are awesome. God bless. And uh, just live life and enjoy it, cause uh, it's very short. It is very short. The guitar, John. Thank you very much and for talking to me. This guy is man. awesome. Oh, you're awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to have me on here. Oh, it was an honor. Please go follow the Guitar John Show on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever. Co come to Nashville. Find him on a street corner. Give him money. <laughs> Peace out, brother. Lyle, nice Name's to meet Cody, you. Cody, man. Cody. Yeah, nice w to meet you. What's your deal, Cody? What's going on? Nothing, man. I'm just standing here. I'm finna go to work. I work at the Hard Rock across the street. You work at the Hard Rock? Yeah, I'm just out enjoying the weather right now. I feel like the Hard Rock Cafe in Nashville must be a gnarly place. Yeah, today's my first day, actually. This is your first day? <laughs> yeah. And you so, haven't even been in there yet? No, I haven't been in there yet. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, what? I, I, maybe this is a stupid question. What inspired you to work at the Hard Rock Cafe? Uh, I really just I love I love Nashville. I like this the energy and the atmosphere and I love to cook and if that's mix of both over there It's non-stop. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm just really uh, Anticipating what I can learn there and how I can progress in that environment. There's a lot of good people there Interesting. So you're you're talking about what you could learn there. What what, what is it that you want to learn there? Uh, just more culinary skills because I love to cook. I love to present food to people. I like okay people the smile on their face when they get it yeah and so it's the closest thing to being a chef in there it's really cool interesting are you are you a chef or are you a waiter uh i'm a i'm a cook you're cook okay. yeah okay. i'm a cook okay so we'll get there <laughs> what uh uh what is like so you you like to cook what is your magnum opus dish what does that mean like your 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 signature dish probably chicken alfredo chicken alfredo i'm not gonna lie yeah definitely okay. that's the bomb.com okay and grilled cheese 
I, I, I feel like, uh, are you going to be cooking <gasps> chicken alfredo and grilled cheese at, at the Hard Rock? Probably, well, probably not there. grilled cheeses. Maybe chicken alfredo, though. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Had to put my own little spin on it. So you love Nashville, and you want to contribute to the to the sphere of the culture. Yes, definitely. What did tell, definitely. tell me what you love about Nashville. Well, first of all, the people. There's some really nice people here, and just it's a really a good place for opportunity, man. It's a good place for you to grow, and that's what I'm trying to do in life right now because I'm really just now like figuring what I like and who I am. Interesting. Uh, what tell me? Um, Let's start from like before when you didn't know. Was when that I like, didn't know, what, was that like a, a struggle to to figure out who you are and what you like? Yeah, because I was always high. You were always high. Yeah, okay. I was on drugs for a long time, bro, okay. and okay. I'm just now getting off of those things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And really just discovering who I am and what real happiness is. Because I thought I was happy, but no, far from it. Was it difficult to wean yourself off the drugs? Very difficult. I've been. I've been using since I was like 13, 14. Yeah. I'm 27. Yeah, yeah. And I'm only I'm only like three or four months clean. Hey, congratulations, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. What uh, what kinds of things are you doing in your sobriety to like keep it up, to keep yourself in good shape, to to try to you know stay off drugs? Staying positive at all times, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing I have to do every morning, bro. Is look at what my day is going to be like, how I'm going to look at it, because it's all about my perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, it is and willingness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And being open-minded to suggestions and remaining teachable is the biggest thing because mm -hmm. I think I know everything. So sure, yeah. I have to remain teachable, bro, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important to not feel as though you're like done growing or like you know everything because then you are opening yourself up to more of the universe's knowledge and shit. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, okay, so you were using for a while. You're three months sober. Again, congrats. What types of like things are you learning about yourself in those three months um i like to roller skate um <laughs> i really like to roller skate bro i do and um i really want to have a hand in helping people but not specifically help find missing people because i just i don't know why that's that's something that's got to be hard on a family bro is to not know you want to help find missing, missing people? people yeah like go on like rogue missions to find like folks on like milk cartons and stuff yes like I really want to do that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's I don't know why or how. It's just something I would like to do because whether they're alive or whether they're dead, it's the fact of knowing for their families. Mm -hmm. That's got to be hard. Waking up every day wondering. Yeah. Have you ever like gone? Have you ever, like looked for missing posters and like gone on your <laughs> yeah. own sort of like hunt for the folks? No, not yet. I don't have the resources or the time right now to do that. Okay. okay. But it's something I aspire to do, man. It really is. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, roller skating, looking for missing people. I both oh. very niche. That, like I wouldn't have guessed those things. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're thinking outside of the box here. Yeah. Any anything else that you're interested in developing for yourself? Um, I want to help. Okay, like people, like like the guy that was just sitting here. Um, yeah. I want to help people like that man that are in because I was that guy before. I've been there. I've been on the streets and not knowing where to go or no having no one to talk to or yeah. no money or no resources. So finally, I would like to get in a position to help those people. Sure, I just sure, want to sure. help, bro. You know what I mean? Sure. Can I ask you? You know, uh, having been in that guy's position, having been on the streets with with not a lot of resources, like what would be the most helpful thing for you in that moment? Go to rehab mm -hmm. <laughs> all mm -hmm. day, because they are going to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, the first they're going to teach you how to help yourself, and then they're going to help you mm -hmm. as far as shelter, food. Mm -hmm transportation everything you need to become a better person they are gonna give you that mm -hmm. it's the best thing i've done ever so you, did you go to rehab three months ago yeah i went to samaritan actually oh no shit yeah oh so was it i assume it was like really hard at first were you going through a lot of like withdrawal and whatnot yeah definitely because my doc can i say it on here you can say whatever you want okay yeah my doc is fentanyl heroin which is deadly bro it's and it took an od for me to actually wake up yeah it took me dying to wake up which is ironic yeah yeah but yeah i did go through those withdrawals and that's yeah. the hardest part but one it's like a week worth of and you fucking made it through yeah definitely that's yeah, awesome that's i did great. and um i don't know it's a blessing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm not really a big believer in god but i do have a higher power you know what i mean it's okay because in the like na and aa and all that stuff they talk about like submitting to a higher power which doesn't necessarily mean god right and so in your own like definition of that what is your higher power well i'm uh, i have a lot of pagan beliefs okay i have a lot of pagan beliefs and wiccan beliefs you know what i mean which is just it just really just ties into the earth and nature 
and there I feel like there's a God of love there's a God of sadness there's a God of the sky a God of you know what I'm saying the trees there's a God for everything so but my main really my main high power is the universe bro like the universe I want it, there's a force that puts people in our path for a reason there's a force that makes us think a certain way mm. there's a force that makes us go through this so we get ready for that even though if we don't know it are you deterministic in your beliefs do you believe that things happen for a reason that is kind of predetermined by forces outside of our control 100 percent. interesting 100 percent. especially my biggest thing is horoscopes they're pre-written yeah but when i read mine it's like it's already it just it speaks on my situation and what I'm going through, not physically, mentally, internally, and it's that's the weirdest thing to me, man. That's so weird. What's your sign? A Pisces. A Pisces. Yeah, so we're already very tuned in with the other side type okay. stuff. And how long has uh, that philosophy been a part of your life? For as long as I remember, bro, since I was a kid, like I've always heard things different, seen things different things look different to me than other people or I've always seen other sides to things that normal people didn't really I'm not gonna say normal but that other people didn't see so I've always felt like I've had not a gift but like a a third eye since I, before I was even aware of it you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. always been open mm -hmm. has uh, you know following your horoscope and 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 sort of this philosophy of the determinism has it guided you into positive places in your life oh yes definitely are you getting Sorry, a call? I gotta be work at two. Yeah. Oh, you, what time is it right oh, now? One fifty-two. We're good. It's 152? right there. One fifty-two. Yeah. Oh man, um, dude, I'm I'm, ha I'm really happy for you, man. You you have a very bright smile on your face. You seem like you're doing a lot better. Yeah, I'm Even alive. I just met you. I'm alive. Yeah. Man, what uh, what are you the most excited for to work at for the Hard Rock? You want to be honest? Please. The girls. <laughs> Seems to be a trend going on today. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, uh, they're really cute girls there, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to let that deter me from my main focus. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cool to make some new friends, get some new associates, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I've had to let all the old ones go. So it's going to be nice to meet some new friends, man. Yeah, so I, I, when you stopped using, did you have like a lot of relationships or you know uh, friendships or anything that were like really tied in with the drug use that you had to cut off? Yes. When I look back, the only thing me and those people had in common was getting high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's a very toxic. I didn't know then, but I know now that's very toxic. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that I had to quit doing was talking to girls. And that's my biggest distraction and my biggest downfall every time. Why, why was it a distracting thing for you? Um, because I put more time into them than I do me. Sure. They yeah. become my higher power. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's not good. That's interesting. We, we talked at the very beginning of this uh, to a girl who was just getting a divorce. And she was had a similar thing where she was like, I'm putting all my energy into this guy. And I'm not key saving any for myself. You yeah. know? So I feel like it's a common thing with Yeah, people. it's draining. Yeah. It's draining, yeah. man. It is. So to recap, roller skating, looking for missing folks. Shit, what was the third thing? Uh, you, had good, you had a good third thing. I want to remember it. What was that? Man. You're picking good niches. The heart, the heart. Was it Hard Rock? Was it cooking? Cooking, Hard Rock. I'm, I'm, all in all, I'm very glad to hear that <laughs> yeah, you yeah, seem yeah. as though you have a lot of very <laughs> exciting things ahead of you to occupy your life and your time that are not only going to be fun for you, but are going to help other people. Yeah. Oh, I love to take pictures and paint. Oh, yeah? And I didn't know that before, but I'm really good at those things. Do you have a, before you go, do you want to plug anything? you have an Instagram or you make art or anything no, like that? No, I don't have any social media. You, you don't have any social media? No. You must be much more calm. Yeah, there's this distracting. Of course. It's distracting. And of course. I find myself always comparing my life to social media, so yeah. I had to let it go. Has getting off of, uh, like, hard drugs sort of helped you with your relationship to other vices, such as, like, Talking to girls, social media, things like that. Yeah, it's made me very much more aware of these problems, mm -hmm. so I can start doing something about them. But you want to know my biggest, my biggest um, vice? obstacle? Yeah, vice. Yes. Uh, yeah, my yeah. ego. Interesting. Myself. Yeah. How? Uh, in what ways? How do you combat that? How do you, in your experience, uh, form a better relationship with your ego? Just being aware of it. Yeah. And knowing when I'm being egotistical and, and chill because I miss mm -hmm. a lot of messages because my ego's in the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being aware of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, yeah, that goes back to what you were talking about earlier about like wanting to be more teachable. And the bigger your ego is, it's like blocks all that yeah, shit. Yeah, it closes your mind. You have to get out of here. Yeah, I have to. Uh, Anything yeah, I else go, you want to say to the people at the computer before you go? Uh, no, man. Just just don't give up. Just don't. It is it, It's possible. Um, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't because you can. You can. 
What's your name again, dude? Cody. Cody. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too, man. Have a seat. I I couldn't turn down the opportunity to get free therapy, man. Oh, man. What's (laughs) going on with you? That guy was so cool. I know. There's no shot I'm going to have any remotely comparable Hey, listen, 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 man, listen, 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 had. listen. You only got to be yourself. Anyway, what's going on with you? I'm chilling, chilling. We're on, uh, I'm not a local here. It sounds like it's a lot of locals that come where, on. But where, where are you f- here from? So we're from New York. My oh, parents are right there. Are these right your there. family? Yeah, they're the ones who are waiting. Okay. <laughs> oh, they've been, they've been waiting with you? <laughs> no, no. Would either of them be down to talk as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom needs some therapy too. So can we, can I talk to your mom? Yeah. Yeah, you want to come in? Okay, okay. Let's talk to you real quick. Okay. I got to talk to your mom. Okay, yeah. Tell <laughs> yeah. me about your relationship with your mom. It's great. It's great. We get along, you know. Where I, I, I'm, I, uh, I just graduated from med school and now moved closer to home. So it's nice. She was very happy about that. So I'm sure now I she get to was. see them a lot more. I'm frequently sure she was. She wanted me to. So uh, it's pretty ha- good. Okay, so you're an adult. Yeah. How old are you? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Is your relationship with your mom at the age of twenty-eight better than your relationship with your mom at the age of eight? That's a that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I think a, a lot of growing up has happened since then. Um, you come to appreciate some things more. Um, yeah, it's it's a little complicated. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a little complicated, mm-hmm. but yeah. What do you what do you guys do to bond? Well, we do this. We we try to spend time together when we can. I think okay. living closer uh, makes a huge difference. Um, I think I'm in a job where I don't really have a lot of free time, so you, okay. you try to take advantage of the time that you do have, and being in physical proximity is always like a helpful way to kind of facilitate that. How would you would you be down to kneel right there while your mom comes here and you guys can share the mic? <laughs> <laughs> I so suppose I can we can make that happen. Okay, let's go. Would you be down? All right. Hi, Gecko. Hello. What is what is What's your name? What's your name? My name is Lyle. Hi, Lyle. I'm Rose. Rose, nice to meet you. Shake his hand. <laughs> Rose, um, uh, so a, I. Do you have sanitizer? Do I have no, hand sanitizer? Well, I actually, I, I, it's gloves. So uh, I asked your son a question. I want to ask you this same okay. question. Right. Oh, your son's 28 years old. Yeah. Is your relationship with him better now than it was when he was eight years old? I never really had a good relationship with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what sorts of things have uh, improved your relationship with your son over time? Um. Really nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you guys bond and do things together, right? Well, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. We're here in Nashville. What are you, What are your guys' favorite things to do together? Uh, make ravioli. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. We're Italian. You know? We're Italian. It's the, Ita- it's the Italian we're Italian. Bond, you know? We're Italians Italian. from New York. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what in when in the ravioli making process, who yeah. does what? Andrew does the rolling out and then yells at me the entire other time (laughs) while I'm doing everything else. Oh, God. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. We work together. We do, you know, we do different parts of it. That's cool. (laughs) Are you... Andrew thought this was going to be about him. No, 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 no. no. This is is way more fun. Isn't it? It's way more fun. So he went off to medical school. He went off to college. I'm sure you missed him very much. Yes, I did. How are you feeling about him being back home? He's not back home. He's not back home. He lives in New York City. Oh, I live does. in Rockland County. All right, all right, all right, all right. We, yeah, we live like at 40, 40 minutes outside of the city, right. and I'm, I'm, you know, working in, uh, in New York City. So it's, it's closer to home. But I did choose to go train in New York City for, you know, to be closer to my parents. His my mom's getting close to retirement. My dad's getting close to retirement. My brother close. just got married. He's gonna start having kids. So that was the main reason why I wanted to go back home uh, for work and training. So. So Lyle, what I really want to know is about your so, mom. My mom. <laughs> But you know, I uh, I actually started doing this. Uh, Was I usually, she behind you with this? Well, it's, I started doing this. Uh, I took. I usually talk to people on the phone, and I started like a little call-in show in her basement. I lived in her basement uh-huh. doing this for Why like was that? Why a year were you and a half. <laughs> well, the pandemic happened, and it was you know right, right. the time to be at home. And and my relationship with my mom was like when I was living with her. It w- we fought all the time because we had to like share space and whatnot. And now that I'm a, a, an adult, that I'm out of the house, and all of our time spent with each other is elective because we're not like forced to spend time by our proximity. When I call her, it's me calling her because I want to talk to her, not her coming into my room or anything like that. Our relationship is so much better. Do you, you make know? ravioli with your mom? No, but I should. I feel like I, I, it's I really should. Nice it's a really nice bonding experience. Okay, I'm going to tell my mom that right. we should make some you ravioli together. You can make focaccia, together. too, if you want. Focaccia would yeah, be good. Yeah. I, I have to figure out what that is yeah, first, yeah, yeah. but... 
<laughs> you could try. Take a basic Italian class, and then you'll be able to you'll figure out what that is. <laughs> yeah. It's a secret. Not a lot of people Did know about focaccia. Did you ever interview your mom? No, you know I have I haven't interviewed my mom. Do you think I should? Do you think I, I should get my I mom on for an interview? Devote, yeah, you should devote a whole show to your mom. Don't I, you? I, maybe you know I should. You know, I should. You're, you're making I'm me feel sure like it would I should. I'm sure it would be very therapeutic. I think it you. would too. My mom's a great person. I'm sure she is. I'm lucky to have a, a, a mom like my mom. You're lucky to have a mom like your mom, yeah, man. A lot does, of people, he does. you know, I talk to people all the time who, you know, I've had rocky relationships with their parents and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's beautiful to see you guys making ravioli together. Yeah. What's, and focaccia. And is, there, is there anything that you've always wanted to tell your son that you haven't had the chance to yet? <laughs> what? What do you mean? Like a big secret? A big secret or... That we confession or that we threw out all of his stuff in his room. I mean, that, that was expected. That's no secret. <laughs> threw out, you threw out all no, the no, stuff no, in no, his room. No, no. My, my my bedroom has become a guest room now. I haven't lived in my room in like five years, so I go there now. It's where everybody dumps all their shit. <laughs> So my room, I, I, don't, I, I don't have any, you know. Can you uh, say shit on TikTok? You, have, you can you say whatever you want. The, the therapy right. gecko show. No you, can, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> no, There's no, no FCC. Really There's right. the yeah, FGG, yeah. and we have no rules. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you really go straight for the deep cuts, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to think if I, is any. Is there anything that I'll ask you? Is there anything you've always wanted to tell your mom that you haven't had the opportunity to? No, my, my, my mom. Okay, my mom sometimes thinks I'm an asshole because I call her out on stuff like when she mispr. <laughs> Like when she mispronounces words or when she like says something that's a little bit out of pocket and like not really well informed, yeah. I'll call her out. But here's the reason why. It's because I want it to reflect positively on our make family. Me better. I want to make you know, no, not that. It's just sometimes you know, sometimes you hear somebody say something on the street and you're just like, Did they really just say that? Damn. You know? We we, we, we have a lot of family pride. I just want to make sure everything is reflected yeah, positively pride, on our family. What what kinds of out of pocket things have you had to correct? Can't you can't say, say you can't say. Well, listen, all of our parents, I've also had to, I've had to do the same thing with my parents as well. Yeah. But our parents are trying. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> are uh, we done now? Is there, done? Rose, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? I want to say God bless America. That's what I want to say. We're here in Nashville. Yes. God bless America. God bless America. Yeah. How about you, man? Yeah. Sometimes you may have disagreements with your mom, and you and you tell her that it's pronounced Keurig, not Keurig, or it's what was the other one that we got? I forget a bunch of other different ones, but you know doesn't Penny. mean whatever. I think you got me on that I one. I got that one. But uh, but uh, yeah, you know it's it doesn't mean we don't love our parents, and we don't you know I I, I only get so much free time I'm choosing it to spend with my parents, so you know oh, it's that's it's so nice. that's yeah nice yeah so uh, thank you guys very much for talking you. to a gecko man. Thank I appreciate you. it. You guys have a good rest of the day, okay? Lots of luck to you guys too, man. Oh, God. I gotta call my mom now. My name is Richie Rich from the motherfucking Click. Richie Rich, how you doing, man? How you doing, man? Thanks for talking to a gecko. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, uh, what are you doing out here on the streets of Nashville today? Man, I'm just chilling, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Memphis, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not from Memphis, real. I'm from New Orleans. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Just over here chilling in the old country town of Nashville. How do you, you know how do you two know each other? Uh, that's my wife right there. You oh, know that's your wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. all. Right. How long have you guys yeah, been married yeah. for? Huh? A couple of years. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We're cool with like that. You know what I'm saying? That's I mean, good. just chilling. What? Uh, uh, so you're in town from Memphis? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What made you guys want to come to Nashville? Man, just come over and just chill out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just see what it's like in the view. Okay. And uh, yeah. what do you think of what you see so far? I, I think a lot of drunk motherfuckers around here. Yeah. A lot of what motherfuckers? A lot of drunk motherfuckers. There are a lot of drunk motherfuckers yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is a popular place <laughs> to become a drunk motherfucker. Hey, include myself. <laughs> I'm drunk than a motherfucker. Oh, you're drunk right now? Hell yeah, I'm drunk right now. Okay, are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? Yeah. I'm finna go get me some whiskey right now as we speak. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. I'm what, drunk. When you're drunk, I've what, been drunk all day. All right, what, when you're drunk, what kinds of activities do you like to do? I, I like to do hopscotch. Uh, you like to do uh, hopscotch? I like to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's very, that's very wholesome. Oh, my God. All right, okay, okay. Now, let me ask you something. Are you better at hopscotch when you're sober or when you're drunk? I like to do it. Uh, one, one, hopscotch. <laughs> look, are you, look, are you, look, 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 look. I'm better at hopscotch when I'm drunk. <laughs> Gonna tell you what, I'm drunk right now, okay. and I'm getting ready to go to the liquor store. 
Okay, what are you gonna get? Shit, some whiskey. Okay, what kind of whiskey? Uh, 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 uh probably some motherfucking uh, 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 um, uh, some Evan Williams. Evan Williams. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you want some? Uh, I'm okay, man. I, 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 I I'm, a, I'm gonna get a DWG if I do that. What? What? Uh, uh, fuck that. I didn't have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> what? When? Uh, when? When did those happen? Oh, a couple years ago. I okay. had one back to back. You went back to back? Hell yeah! How did how how did that happen? Okay, I lived in Minnesota for twenty years, right? Yeah. I had one one week, and I had another one the next week. Okay. In North Dakota. Okay. So uh, uh, it don't matter to me, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, like I said, I'm fit to get me a drink. Okay. I get my drink on. Sure, sure. Hell yeah. What, so okay, so you like to drink? You like hopscotch? Yeah. What else do you like to do in I life? I like to play uh, pool and all that shit too, okay. man. Are you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, you ass ever, up. you ever, you ever hustle people? You ever? I tell you, ass up and pool. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I like to play um uh, um, uh, you know, you know, back in the day when we used to play uh little 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 house and shit on prayer. Yeah. When you, uh, you know what I'm saying? When you had them motherfuckers, uh, you like the family and shit. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know what I'm talking about, man? Uh, I kind of. A yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, at the okay, same you time. Like, you like pool? You like yeah. hopscotch? Any, yeah. any, any, any other hobbies, activities, I'm interests? I'm a hustler. You're a hustler? Do you make money, like, playing people yeah. in <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll cut that part. <laughs> we'll cut that. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we cut it, but I don't give a fuck, though. Nah, nah, nah. You know I what I'm saying? Fuck that shit, man. Can I, can, can, can I talk to her? Yeah, yeah. We all <laughs> pass the goddamn shirt. I pay that motherfucker. <laughs> so I don't give a fuck. I mean, it's <laughs> I'm serious, sure, man. Ask him why he you got his goddamn car from. You pay, you pay the sheriff? You motherfucker right. What? How did you? Okay. Don't worry about it. Oh, I, right, I won't ask any questions. It's not my business. Ask him where he get his goddamn car from. I will. I will. I'll ask him where he gets his car from. See, I pay that motherfucker. Could I? Could we? Could I interview her? Yeah. 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 Are you? One do, time, would you want to talk? One time. Say again. Okay. Here. Oh, nah. What's 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 your name? Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie. What's uh? How are you enjoying your time in Nashville? Let me see. He said what? How are you enjoying your time in Nashville? It's alright. There's a lot of drunks. You're what? Too many drunks. Okay, okay. Um, well, listen, what, what's what's your name again? Uh, 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 my name is uh, Rick Ross. Why am I uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm Rick Ross from the boss. What's your name, Graham? Uh, uh, my name is Lyle. Lyle from the Kyle. Lyle from the Kyle. Lyle, you still dope? Uh, no, man. <laughs> I just, I just run around. I, I, I mean, listen. I, I saw a, a stand over there where they were selling. If you're looking to buy right, some do weed, you smoke but dope? do you, you smoke crack? Do I smoke crack? Yeah. I've never smoked crack, but I've heard it's How pretty do you great. Have you started in powder? I yeah, I've started. I don't. I have do started cocaine before. Do I have? Do, do I have a lot, a lot of, of bitches? Do I have a lot of bitches? Do you got a lot of bitches? Uh, you know, I, I, I have no, gone no, out hey, on dates gay, with straight. ladies before. Hey, you're gay, you're straight. I'm, I am straight, man. You like your little gay with that suit on. You know what? I, 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 I'll keep it ambiguous. Why not? I have no shame in anything. Come on, talk to me now. You ain't got to be on the low. Nah, man. I'm living a good life. I'm hanging out. You might be sweet. If you sweet, you sweet. <laughs> what's, uh, is, what's your name one more time? Uh, Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Is there anything else you want to say to the people uh, at the yeah, computer before you, we go? If you're straight, you, you, you motherfucking just, just don't tell the truth, man. <laughs> don't be lying about it, man. Be truthful about the shit. Uh, whether or not I'm straight? Yeah, you look gay. I'm, I'm, you, you know. You ever get fucked in your booty? I've n I have never gotten, uh, no, I haven't. I haven't before. I haven't before. Yeah, and you know, man. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe I would like it. I don't know. I've never tried man. it before. Oh, you look gay then. What? I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I'm saying. Look, I don't think I would. But I'm had, saying, in the event that it, it happened, I, I maybe. Have you who ever knows? had a woman licking your ass? Have you had a woman licking your ass? I think. Like in the I think so. Maybe ass. at one point in my life. Like licking your ass. Not like all and, over my and ass. And suck your dick at the same time. Not, not, no. I have not had somebody lick my ass and suck my dick at the same it time. It feel good. Uh, it sounds great. It feels very good, brother. It sounds great. When you have great. a woman lick up in your ass, boy, it's the yeah. best feeling you can feel in the world. 
Well, you know what? I'm maybe I'll, I'll try it sometime on try your that. personal recommendation. You need to try that. You need to Rick, thank you very yes, much for talking yeah. to a gecko, you, man. Too, Both of you guys have yeah. a good rest of you your time in sweetness. Nashville. You keep it sweetness. I will. I yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and don't don't have your hand too close to your dick. <laughs> hey, appreciate you guys, man. Have a, have a good rest of the day. This has been being a gecko in Nashville. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, Gek bless you all. See you around the universe. Uh, you know what I have learned from doing this? Is you throw out a net and you'll catch some interesting stuff. Yeah. We're on the computer. See you later, folks.